Okay, so we're going to have a think about what happens when these main sequence, these middle-aged stars, get old. So if you've got a smaller star and you've been using up all that hydrogen, remember that hydrogen, the hydrogen fusion, is what's giving the outward pressure against gravity. So I want you to think about what would happen if you didn't have that outward pressure against gravity here. You need to have something powering that star or gravity will win. Okay, so basically when those smaller stars start running out of hydrogen, the core can actually collapse. And, and that's just because you've got that gravitational pressure pushing in. Eventually that will happen. Uh, and what will happen then is, remember, we've been making lots and lots of helium in the centre of that, that sun for a long time, for potentially tens of billions of years by now. So we start using that as fuel and we start just slamming helium nuclei together in, what, in what's called the triple alpha reaction because there's three alpha particles and alpha particle is a helium nuclei. So we start off and we slam two together and we've got, so we've got two protons and two neutrons on each of them. So we have four protons and four neutrons together, which if you have a look at the periodic table is beryllium. Uh, so we get our beryllium being formed and in the process of that, we're actually ejecting a gamma photon. So we've got energy, yay. Um, and so now we've got a beryllium atom or nuclei, because remember the electrons are stripped off, it's too hot down there. Uh, and then we just like slam another one. So that's a triple part. So we've had the three now. So we've had three helium nuclei slamming together eventually. And that uh, we then get, so that's like um, six, six protons in the center. And if you have a look at your periodic table again, you'll know that um, the, that means that you're talking about carbon. So we produce carbon molecules this way, or carbon nuclei. And once again, that produces a, a second gamma photon. Now, you can even go further with that and then you can make oxygen by just like chucking another one on and you can imagine you can just yeah, keep going. But it's called the triple alpha because it's that first bit. It's the turning into beryllium and turning into carbon uh, that's the triple alpha and then you just keep adding on um, depending on what's left in the middle of the star. So for larger stars, like you can just keep going on this like for so long um, and you can just continue to fuse heavier and heavier elements but remember, that's like you're only going to be like you think about where's the hottest part of the star, where's the most pressure, it's going to be in the core. And so it's at the core that you find the heaviest elements because that's where the ignition temperatures and the pressure has been high enough for those reactions to occur. So uh, supermassive stars, basically, they'll actually like so really, really gigantic ones will fuse these in shells. So you'll have like the like much heavier elements in a shell in the center and then it will progressively go out. Um, eventually it just turns to iron and the whole the star collapses and it dies as a supernova and it's sad for the star, spectacular for us, um, which we'll have a look at soon. Um, so there's a really cool diagram just down here, or like a, I don't know what you call that, that circle thing, um, and it's talking about a star that's like 25 solar masses. So imagine, imagine if our sun was 25 times the size it is in the, sun, in the sky right now. It would be very hot. We wouldn't like it, but it would be you know, pretty cool hot actually um okay so if we have a look we can do hydrogen to helium fusion for seven by ten to the six years this is in a giant like a supermassive star so not ours, ours can do this much longer been doing it for you know five billion years or so now so don't don't worry about it it's not going to burn out in what seven million years um and then we can do helium to carbon so that's that little process the triple alpha process we just saw there for another by another seven by ten to the five years then we can go from carbon to oxygen so we can do that last bit like after the triple alpha we're going to do that for about 600 years which in terms of like the universe is like no time at all and then we can go from oxygen to silicon and we can only do that for six months um and then when we get to iron a day that's how long a supermassive star will produce iron for so um that's insane uh, and it takes, at that point, the core is just going to collapse because like, it just can't do anything else with that iron at that stage. And the, it's no longer in hydrostatic equilibrium because you've still got the same, basically the same amount of mass. Obviously, the smarties out there are going, but some of the energy is being, you know, like is being produced because we're converting mass to energy. So the mass of the star is dropping. Well, this is true, but it's still like a supermassive star. So don't, don't go getting technical. Um, basically, um, the, the pressure from all of that gravitational pull is so strong and there's not enough 
diffusion pressure anymore pushing back out. And so if you look at that little diagram, it says, I'm trying to read it, 174 seconds to collapse the core. So it's pretty sad, hey? <laughs>